that should make a new shift. It's a much smart isolation. So, it's a lovely rainy day in Texas and I've finally gotten out of my productivity rut and it's time to do some sewing. Let me push away what I'm working on over here. So, Snappy Dragon came up with the wonderful idea of doing a set of videos across the costume community of yesterday's pajamas. I will be making a supportive 14th century shift based off of texts and visual depictions from the era and I'm gonna take you along on this journey. I've made one pair or one set already but I'm gonna go back and do some modifications to my original pattern and while I'm doing that I might as well show you how I draped it which is fairly important considering it's such a well-fitted garment that's meant specifically for you and your body that you can or lace looser and tighter as necessary with weight gain weight loss as well as growth in the chest area and so i'm gonna show you how to do that and certain parts i'm probably gonna get have to get a stand-in for the rest because youtube does not like that and they don't want my video to get flagged so, without further ado, let's get started. So, here's where we're starting. Obviously, no support. It just kind of hangs, and this is a bit tighter than I thought it would be, so it is actually doing a good job of flattening the bust, which is another key thing that we want. We want some reduction of the breasts. I managed around two inches on my first run around. Let's see how we do on this one. But if since the sides are already uh, pretty tight, I just need to pin the waist a little bit. Let's go to the other step, which is the boob area. Now, what you're gonna do to position these properly is not pull them up like you normally would, but instead, so. Here, if I'm holding it by the butt, just treat this like a rib cage. They're so somewhat going out, yes, but still hanging down because of the gravity. So we want gravity to help, so we lean forward. I do this by getting down on my hands and knees and then hitting from there. But you can see, instead, the feet are hanging down like this, which makes it easier for us to, in this case, tighten the fabric around it to create more support and sort of spread the fat out a little bit more to get more of that breast reduction that we're looking for. Obviously, you can see despite the fact that my boobs desperately want to go down, they can't due to the amount of tension now underneath. And so we're getting a little bit of that shape as well as more of the breasts going up as well, which is kind of what leads to the high cleavage that you see in certain manuscript miniatures. My favorite one probably being the cleavage drawn in the Wenceslas Bible. <laughs> it's just a fun thing to be able to, now that I have made this, I can see like, oh, that's where that's from. That's how they're doing that. And it makes a whole lot more sense. <laughs> After removing the mock-up, all I have to do is cut it into quarters and cut out the pattern pieces. And I'm folding down the straps because I decided to go off of some of the references that we have in the Wenceslas Bible, which appear to have separate straps from the body of the garment.
While I work on the more tedious parts of sewing, let's talk about the documentation we have for these supportive shifts. Understandably, it's hard to get concrete detail, and most of our documentation is spread from the writings of Henri de Mondeville in the early 14th century, all through the or satirical poems of the 15th century and the finds in the East Tyrol Castle of 1450. However, visual and written descriptions, as well as those four miraculous extants from Germany, give us a couple of options with which to craft a supportive shift. The first would be what many have called the Saxonies, and is what most of the Langberg bras are. Specifically, this, the image of this is the fourth and most complete find from the castle. This is also described in Montville's Book of Surgery as one of the methods employed by French women who would not undergo the breast reduction surgery that he wrote about originally. I intend to make one of these two someday, but for now, let's move on to the other options. The second is the tight tunic option. Basically, it is described that women would compress the breasts with tight tunics and laces. This is more similar to what I'm making, as it's minimally shaped and is primarily intended to reduce the size of the breast as well as support it. And this is to fit within the fashion of the time period I portray, especially for 1380 England, as it slowly heads towards what's known as the gothic fitted gown, but it isn't totally fitted yet. Though it's not as documented in visual art or writings, uh, I do think that there may be some holder, holdover from the previous method of binding the breasts, which was used in the Roman era, it was used by the Greeks, it's known as Pastorphium, and it's documented until I think the last written depiction I have is the 12th century. However, as it does not appear in written or visual depictions from the time frame I'm looking at, I will not be using that method. So, without further ado, let's get back to the sewing room. The next step is fairly straightforward. You'll want to sew up the center back and front seams, and then fell all of the raw edges of the garment. This way everything is prepared for doing the eyelets and attaching the skirt. Since the eyelets go through a fair bit of stress, you want to firmly whip around them with silk thread. For the skirt, we're taking one yard length of 60 inch wide linen and then folding and cutting that in half to get the skirt and then that will then be folded and pleated into the waistband. <laughs> 